All right, this was number one. It said to find the exact values of sine to you, cosine to you, tangent to you. Obviously, the two times the angles, these are your double angles, right? So I have to use the information that's given, which is that sine of u is negative 4 fifths, and that u is in between pi and 3 pi over 2 to set up a triangle. So I'm going to first say that my triangle quadrant Exact values of sine to you, cosine to you, and tangent to you. If you're given cosine of you is negative four fifths and it's in the second quadrant. So which means back four up three. And you would be here. And then sine would be two sine cosine. Two three fifths negative four fifths over 1, that's 6 times 4, that's negative 24 over 5 times 5, which is 25. Then cosine 2u, this should be 2u. I would have picked the first one, but again, it doesn't matter as long as you're you can pick any of those, the three that are there. So cosine was negative 4 fifths. Sine 3 fifths. That's 16 fifths, 20 fifths, minus 9 20 fifths or 7 25ths. And then tangent 2 tan u over 1 minus tan squared is 2 times negative 3 fourths over 1 minus negative 3 fourths squared negative 6. Well, this would be 3 halves to get kicked off. Yeah. This is the problem with exemptions already. Three half. Right? Mm. I feel like I would like the week off too though. I graded those papers that got you those exemptions. Thank yeah. You. Uh the last day. Yeah, so. yeah, Wednesday, Thursday are your days. Yeah. Woo! Super exciting. And I will do like a review on, th on Wednesday. Like I would come on Wednesday. Like if you're one of those people like, I don't really think that my teachers do anything, I'll review with you more than the packet. So I would come. Don't be lazy. Thanks for grading the test for You're welcome. I was reloading Canvas like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the negative three halves over. 7 sixteenths multiply, this is 8, negative 24 over 7. You're welcome. Okay, and, okay, yep. All right, this is from the homework. It says find the exact values of sine of u over 2, cosine of u over 2, and tangent u over 2 if the half angle formula. So the first thing I have to do is if this one's in the third quadrant like it was from the warm-up, then u over 2 is going to be in the quadrant 2, which means my sine stays positive, my cosine is negative. That's the sine part of it, okay? Then I have to use cotangent of u, so u being adjacent over opposite would be 7 over 1. And then complete the triangle, I get the square root of 49. Or sorry, I get the square, 49 plus 1, which is 50 square, 50 square rooted, which is 5 root 2. And that's the missing side. The doubled angle is in quadrant 3, but the halved angle is quadrant 2. And the halved angle is what you base your answers on. Yeah. All right, then it says to, um, and this is in the third quadrant, which means these are both negative, negative seven and negative one. So then when I go to do sine of u over two, it's positive square root of one minus cosine over two, which is one minus the cosine there is negative seven over five root two over two. And you could have left it as root 50 and worked it out that way. 
So, but this would be plus, and this becomes 5 root 2 over 5 root 2. And I'd get 5 root 2 plus 7 over 5 root 2, all over 2, keep, change, flip. And I get 5 root 2 plus 7 over 10 root 2, and that's underneath your square root. So then I have to multiply by root 2 here. And I get 5 times root 2 times root 2, which is 5 times 2, plus 7 root 2 over 10 root 2 times root 2, which is times 2. You can multiply it, but then you end up simplifying it anyway. So if I multiplied it out, it looks like this. But then I end up simplifying it anyways. Because you have to split it and over. This becomes 2 root 5. And then you got to rationalize it. So these numbers were really yucky. Like, I probably won't. This would be 50 plus 7 root 10 over 10. And then I think they took the 1 tenth out. I think the format. But I think it would have taken it either way. The good news is that like it, when you're setting up your triangles, I went pretty easy on you as far as like the sides go. You're not going to have like a root in your answer that's not simplifiable. So when you go to split it, like when you go to split it from here, like this is all under the root. When you go to split it from here, uh, that will either be super simple to rationalize or it will be a, um, a, like, a like a four or something that you can actually simplify. Some of you got like seven for cotangent, some of you got nine, they were a little bit hard. And again, like on homework, as long as you're showing the work to set it up, if you get it wrong, again, you need to like relax, it's homework, as long as you're showing the work to set it up, I give you back the credit. If you're not getting it right and you're not setting, well, if you're not showing the work at all, it's a problem. If you're not getting it right and you're not showing the work, then it's double the problem, okay? All right, so then this exact values of the equation, this is where you had to replace. So sine of two u is the same thing as two sine u cosine u. So that becomes 2 sine u cosine u plus cosine x equals 0. Or not x, u, x, x. And then you can take out a cosine. And then you can split and solve it. Not until it's set equal to 0, right? We went over that last week. So cosine is 0 at pi over 2. And it doesn't give you, yeah, it does give you an interval. And 3 pi over 2. And 2 sine of x <coughs> equals negative 1. Sine of x would equal negative 1 half, which is at 7 pi over 6. And 11 pi over 6. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then this last one is use the half angle to determine the exact values. So the first thing you have to do is figure out where this lies. 7 pi over 12 is in the second quadrant, which means cosine is negative, sine is positive. And then I would double it. So 7 pi over 12 times 2 is 7 pi over 6, and that is a unit circle-based question. So when I go to find uh, the square root of 1 minus the cosine, I use 7 pi over 6. And then 1 plus the cosine of 7 pi over 6. And then... Uh, 1 plus, and then I said this was positive, this is negative. So from there, you would just 7 pi over 6, which is negative root 3 over 2, 1 half. So this is 1 minus a negative, which becomes 1 plus. This is negative <laughs> 1 minus root 3 over 2. And then this is 1 minus a negative, so it becomes plus over 1 half. So the way these answers worked is by the time you, so this would have been 2 over 2, 2 plus root 3 over 2 over 2 times a half, that becomes 2 plus root 3 over 4. And you get the square root of 2 plus root 3 over 2. Then I'm going to do this, and so the 1 half they brought out front. And then the original question said nine times that. So I just make this nine times that or nine halves, 
what's there. Same thing with this one, I would multiply that end by nine. So that would become two minus root three, and then it would be nine halves times two, root two minus root three. Does that make sense? When you, from, so this is the original over two here, and then when I brought it to the top, I did times a half. So then it becomes four in the denominator, but then you square root it. So this becomes 2 over 2 plus root 3 over 2, right? Which is this. And then it's over 2. So it's over 2. And then I brought that to the top by, instead of dividing by 2, multiplying by a half. And then this is my numerator here. And 2 times 2 became 4. And then you would split that. And you'd get square root of 2 plus root 3 over square root 4, which becomes 2. Then I pulled out the half. So this two split out as the one half. And then I multiplied it times the nine, that was there. Yep. How can you talk to you a little bit about your midterm review because for those of you that are taking it, obviously now's the time to start, okay? That module has, right now, it has the reviews and then it has the reference sheet towards the end or the middle of the week, actually, I'll publish the answers to these. You will be turning this packet in partially completed end of class tomorrow, which means you really need to get started on it today and then you'll get to work on it in class tomorrow. You'll turn in, I would say like 30 questions is probably what I would expect by end of class tomorrow. Um, and then that would be like your last, last grade because grades close on Wednesday. So if you go to Canvas, if you haven't already, everybody needs to do this, go to Canvas and grab the review packet. And then I, you should be looking at it in front of your faces. Okay, so as you look through this packet, you'll notice that some of it says using a calculator. Obviously, that's the part that you're using a calculator. I think it's only four questions that you actually have your calculator for. And you'll start on that. And then you won't go back to it this time. That's it. You're done with the calculator. You're moving on. Then comes all the other stuff. And you'll also see that mixed in is some graphing. Everywhere there's a graphing question, that would be on an open-ended response. So you can get an idea of that, okay? As you move through the rest of it, it would be multiple choice. So like one where it asks for the midpoint and distance, multiple choice. Domain, all that stuff, multiple choice. Something like two where you're graphing the equation, that's gonna be on your open-ended response questions. It should be pretty obvious. If it's asking you to graph, that's gonna be a question that you're graphing by hand. The rest of it would be multiple choice. So as you move through this packet, I tried to do it in order of like what, how it was taught. Uh, some things might be a little bit out of order, but overall, that's kind of in that. Same thing for your test, like obviously the, the calculator part is not in order, but I tried to make it relatively in order. So if you're like going with your notes, most of the stuff that you're looking at here would be chapter one, and then you move into like all of this until we get to the eyes, obviously would be chapter one. Then comes your um, rational expressions, which are on this page, so this would be a full multiple choice page. There's your um, graphs again when it starts with 20. So these are gonna be your open-ended graphs. That's exponential and then log. Then we got into logs. These all say to solve it without a calculator. When you get to, um, let's see, question, this then starts trick. When you get to question 41 and 42, this is your double angle and your half angle like we just went through. Uh, 43 and 44 are back to graphs, so you're gonna graph those by hand. 45 graphs, these are all transformation based. Then came your sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant. So you want to be prepared for sine, for cosine, for cosecant, for secant, for cotangent, and for tangent, depending on which version you get. Obviously, you get different trig functions. Then come complete the identity. So the good news is for those of you that are struggling with the complete the identity, this is multiple choice. So at least you have somewhere to go. Like it's not just simplifying it into the unknown. It should be multiple choice, so you should know where to go. There's a little practice ones on there. Uh, 52 is your double angle, which is what we just went over. 53 is your half angle. And then this is the portion that is calculator based. So that's 54 to 59 on this, okay? The questions will pull from there. It's not necessarily obviously the same questions, but there, it will pull from that area that will be calculator based. And again, you'll start with those. That's how you'll start your, your test.
Um, the, again, good chunk of it is multiple choice, except for the graphs, those would be open-ended. So you'll need a calculator. You can use graphing or scientific. I don't care which one, but obviously you'll have to have one or the other. Um, and then you'll only have it for that beginning part, then you'll move on. Questions as far as logistics go on your test? Or expectations? Is that how you no, it's 42 questions, I think. Okay. Yeah, no, you cry. <laughs> and, oh. and this is, again, this is the reference sheet that you'll get, which has the trig identities, the sum and difference formulas, the double angle, the half angle, and then your unit circle. So you'll get this exact sheet. I would recommend practicing with this exact sheet so that you know where to find things. Both of those, pa the packet and this, is on your review module. Uh, about Wednesday-ish, I will post all the answers to it. They're worked out answers so that hopefully it, by Thursday you come in, especially you guys because you got to take it first. You come in and you would have checked your answers and you would have known which ones you need help with. Questions? 